destruction can be definitely and effectively outlawed forever. Exclusive to Movie Tone, an interview with a prominent British scientist, Professor Oliphant, who has made headlines recently with his forthright statements of opinion. Professor Oliphant, when will atomic energy start to introduce new standards of living for us? Apart from certain very wonderful applications to medical science and to chemistry, which are byproducts of the new discoveries, the main effect on our daily lives and our future economy will be the provision of electric power, a new source of industrial power. The time required to achieve that end will depend entirely on how badly we need that power and the time required for fitting it into our ordinary economy. Those who take a realist, by which they really mean a defeatist attitude, and say it will take a very long time, uh, certainly ensure that it will take a very long time. In actual fact, I think that in America, power stations will be running experimentally on atomic energy in five years or so. In England, because we possess no plants at present, it will perhaps take 10 to 15 years before we have experimental stations actually operating. Well, does that mean that we are definitely going to be left behind then in the development of these new discoveries? The crucial question is how soon it can be made to compete economically with coal and oil. And that question can only be solved by driving ahead and trying. It may be that the very needs of this country for new sources of industrial power will ensure that we get there first. But the great virility of American industry and the drive which she can bring to bear on a problem like this may in the end mean that we fall behind. There are a few laboratories in Britain where atomic research is being carried on and it's over one of these, the Nuffield Laboratories in Birmingham, that Professor Oliphant presides. Some of his assistants here demonstrate for Movitone the parts of the cyclotron, a mysterious mechanism used in nuclear fission, or if you prefer it, in breaking the atom. All this, of course, is directed towards the peaceful exploitation of the new discoveries, but as the Washington Declaration of Truman, Attlee and Mackenzie King emphasizes, knowledge gained in such research can so easily be applied to the uses of war. Big installations for constructing the atom bomb were built in secret at Oak Ridge in America. They might equally well be built in other countries. Therefore, it's of vital importance that all atomic research should come under international control. And the scientists who discovered the new energy have surely a right to be heard. On asking Professor Oliphant a question on this point, we received no uncertain reply. The technical implications of the bomb its colossal destructive power and its ease of delivery by the new methods of rocket warfare combine to convince me that if ever we are engaged again in a major war, it will mean the obliteration of our island home as a uh, industrial centre. It is ironic that politicians, with an airy disregard of scientific opinion in America and Great Britain, should play down its international implications and should chide scientific men for daring to express an opinion on its political implications. Scientists plead for complete and open discussion between all countries, but no single scientist has threatened to reveal technical secrets to another country. They claim only the right to political opinion and to the expression of that opinion, which is based on technical knowledge, so that the people of our country shall share their conviction that the time has come to put an end to war and to secret diplomacy. They appreciate the supreme difficulty of any international control of atomic power, which is not based upon mutual trust and understanding, and the relinquishing of all national rights to make or to possess atomic bombs in order that the world should reap some of the possible benefits of atomic power and should not devote its technical effort instead to a suicidal arms race in atomic weapons, they believe that all military rights should be vested in an international world authority. <laughs>